Hello, floss tube stitchers. I wanted to start off this vlog within a vlog by continuing our discussion on counting pins from the last video. I realized that because I hadn't planned my whole presentation, I may not have been clear on a few things, but I wanted to read you some comments that came through after the video. Uh, Linda Eskew said, I've used counting pins when stitching whole coverage pieces. So I think it would be really helpful to stick pins either every 10 spaces on your chart so that it looks like the graph paper, or you could put the counting pins where the next page starts or where that line of color ends and a new one begins. Then Deanna Ellett says that she's used her quilting straight pins as counting pins. And a lot of other people mention that they just use sewing pins. The problem with the sewing pins, I think, is because the head is uh, maybe small enough that it could come through your fabric. And what's nice about the handmade counting pins is they have bigger beads at the top um, so that they won't come through by mistake. Susan Haywood says she uses them to mark the center to start and then when she has a lot to count such as a border. And Felice Amadio says I've never used a counting pin but do have some antique hat pins that I used to count. So yeah you can really use anything with that shape. Um, they can be tapestry, they can be sharp, um, as long as you keep it away from yourself or um, I read a tip someplace that you can use, I'll just hold up my earrings here, you can use those, here we go, we can, you can use those little earring nuts, bolts, whatever they're called, the earring stoppers, you can put those on the end of your counting pins. The ones that I'm giving away are a little on the shorter side because they've got several beads at the top. So you won't have a whole lot of space before you have to put the stopper on, but they'll still work. And I did notice that these are sharps rather than tapestry. So you might be careful of that too, whether you make them yourselves or buy them. Um, if they're sharp, you might really wanna uh, put some kind of a stopper on the end. And if you have any other great ideas for what to use as a stopper, let me know in the comments and I'll share that next time. Um, okay, then there was a comment on Facebook from Carol. Carol, I'm going to screw up your name. Pelletier or Pelletier? I'm not sure. She said, I wonder how they don't stab into you as you work. And then she also said, I've seen stitchers use needle keepers on their work and wonder how they don't interfere with their stitching. Well, it's very true that you don't need a lot of accessories to stitch, but a lot of people use things to make it easier on themselves so they don't make mistakes and have to rip out so they can stitch when they're tired and not worry that they're gonna, you know, screw something up. Um, or just to have pretty things, the counting pins look cute in a pin cushion. So you don't need them, but they can be helpful if you use them in the right way and the little uh, earring nuts will uh, keep yourself from getting stabbed. And then I just wanted to comment on using a needle minder. If you stitch in hand, the needle minder is not gonna be as helpful because it will tend to weigh down your fabric and it could just get in the way. But you can wear it and put your threaded needle there. The other thing people do is put it, oh, I didn't, I don't have a hoop here, but um, they put it all the way to the edge of the hoop or Q-snap, not really super close to what they're stitching. And figure out which side of the hoop or up or down, figure out where it won't get in your way and put it there. It doesn't matter where it goes. There's no right or wrong. So hope that answers Carol's concerns. All right, um, I also read a tip someplace that when you're counting, if you're really not sure, or if it's a border that has to perfectly match up and you, you can't make do if there's a mistake, that when you count out, you can also count back to the beginning to make sure that you have it right. Now, don't take the pins out when you're counting back. Leave it there and maybe just use 
um, your fingernail or um, long dog stitcher uh, Jenny, she said she uses the tip of her scissors to count. So you could put the pins in every 10 spaces, however you need to go. And then you can come back with your, I don't even have scissors here. You can come back with your scissors and use the tip to, to count back um, to make sure that you did it right the first time. And then you've got some extra security there. Um, I think that's all I wanted to say, except Quilter and Cross Stitcher, I don't know who you are, but you're going to have to tell me, said, I've never used counting pins, but they would be great on a big piece. Guess what? You're getting them. That's who the random number generator chose. So you're getting the big B one and then the little counting pins and you'll have to show us a picture of your progress on your next big piece using your counting pins. So I did already comment back to her uh, on the last video, but this is a shout out just in case she didn't see that. So whoever is named Quilter and Cross Stitcher, there you go. All right, on to the next thing. Since this is the start of Thanksgiving week, I thought I'd show you some more fall models that maybe you haven't seen yet. This first one is Bent Creek's Autumn Arches, stitched by Kate Fulton. And I apologize for the lights showing. I don't have my husband here holding up the black phone cord today. The next one is the Drawn Threads Simply Autumn, obviously from a Four Seasons series. And this was stitched and custom framed by Bonnie Saffron. We Gather Together is by Scissor Tail Designs. And this was stitched by Marlene Oleniak. And this is French Country Turkey, stitched and framed by Bonnie. Actually, all four of those were framed here by Valley Framing. Okay, now we're back at the white bookshelf unit. This is Live Within Your Harvest by Silver Creek Samplers, stitched by Lois Snyder. This is Pretty Pumpkin from The Scarlet House, on loan to us from Mary Rowland. This is Turkey Hunt from The Trilogy, stitched by Marlene. This is Scary Two from Plum Street Samplers. That one's mine. Another one from Marlene is Give Thanks by Hands On Design. Then on this shelf, we have Bent Creek's Let Us Be Thankful Row. I chose the Fabric Flare Parisian Stripe. And I love that this chunky barnwood looking frame stands up by itself, so it works perfectly on a shelf. And then this is Holiday Hoopla Thanksgiving from With Thy Needle, and that's mine, and it's kind of like in a shadow box frame. I had to get down on my knees for this one. We have Rovaris Give Thanks in the back, uh, stitched by Marlene. This is um, Tiny Turkey from Bent Creek. And even though that's skinny, it's so lightweight that it stands up by itself too. That one's mine. Grateful, Thankful, Blessed by Lizzie Kate. And I chose to substitute buttons for two of the leaves. This is also mine, Gobble Wobble, which came as a kit from Bent Creek. Okay, don't shoot me. I can't help it that designers are still designing cute things. Although these may be the last charts we see from some of these designers before the end of the year, but they've still been coming in strong. Fairy Wool in the Wood has Frosty, and it includes the really cute charm and bells. Where are the bells? Oh, they're on the, there they are. The bells are on the hanger. Oh, that's really cute. I didn't notice that before. All right, oh, same thing on winter with the ice skate. That's a really cute way to finish. From the Heart has Hannah's Christmas, and Wendy took these designs from an antique sampler. Hey Pumpkin from It's So Emma. I love the finish on that too. 
Jardin Privé has three designs in Crazy Noel. The only thing crazy is that guy's face. Otherwise, they're adorable. And Red Christmas. That's nice. Winter Fling by Luhu Stitches. Christmas Breakfast from Madame Chantilly. And fa la 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 la. Okay, this is adorable. And I know you probably can't read it because of the color that she chose, but she chose it on purpose because this is the color of a, a medical mask. So it's that turquoisey. Um, so it says on the back, mark the COVID-19 pandemic as a souvenir pillow or finish of choice. This sampler is fraught with many representations of the pandemic culture of 2020. The border represents the virus with masks in between. The letters are six stitches apart. Between the rows of letters, there are directional arrows the five-star rating for 2020 is just half a star. Then there's pandemic buzzwords, COVID-19, quarantine, homeschool, social distancing, work at home, wash your hands, shelter in place, sanitize, and mask up are subtly stitched in medical mask aqua. We endured the pandemic one stitch at a time and are now so, S-E-W, over it. That is so cute. Pineberry Lane has Merry and Bright. So yeah, a little brighter than her usual samplerish colors, but I love it. Ah, here she goes, Noelle. This one's a little more subtle. Look at the bows on the corner. That's a really cute way to finish a little pin cushion too. Then on the Plum Street Auto, we got Falling. George decorates for Martha. He is pulling his weight around the holiday. Raccoon Rabble. Rest a while. He's cute. They're little troublemakers though, aren't they? Sweater weather. And she couldn't resist for Christmas. Ugly sweater weather. So cute. Tralala -la has Noel Knight. Oh, I love those little reindeer. And look at the bunny, the little birds. That's adorable. And Christmas mice. Then Blackbird Designs has a re-release. The drum that everyone's been talking about. So early Christmas morning finally came. A little bit ago. Oh look, counting pins or hat pins. But that's one way to decorate a pin cushion. So that's good to finally have that in. Little House has Geppetto's, Geppetto's Workshop. Then Luminous Fiber Arts, Christmas Bird Trio. Fleece Navidad and Noel Rouge. There's a lot of red. Here's Red Rhapsody from Rosewood Manor with an extra little pincushion using some of the initials. And something blue. And then the last new one is Scandi Christmas Set from Tiny Modernist. I love her color choices too. They're always so happy. All right, hope you enjoyed.
We also got in floss biddies, which are floss drops designed by Lori Holt of It's So Emma in four really cute designs that all come in the same package. You get 20 total, so five each of the four designs. Let's see if I can do it right this time. I keep getting glare on the plastic. So there's a thimble. There's a skein of floss. There's the threaded needle. And the last one is a fancy pair of scissors. And there are uh, multiple size metal rings that you can use for organizing your floss. And one of my favorite things about these floss biddies, well, besides how cute they are, but there's two holes. So most of the other bobbins, in fact, I think all of the ones that we usually carry only have a hole at the top for organizational purposes. But uh, this is handier to have the two because you could have, you could put the bobbin right back on the ring and still use it because you can have floss coming from the bottom. So here's a number of different ways you can use it. You can wrap your cut thread around the center of the bobbin and this could be DMC or one of the thread companies that doesn't pre-cut like Weeks Dye Works. I can't imagine that you would use um, classic or general art on this on a regular basis because they already come on a nice size card. But let's say you're kidding something and you just need one length of each color or um, you bought a 10 yard skein and are separating it. But anyway, there are multiple uses for this. Uh, but th So the bulk of your thread can go around the center. And then this could be the next cut thread that you're gonna use for your project. And then up here could be um, partially used lengths you could maybe even have just one strand left of something. And this is good for doubling over to stitch um, isolated stitches, um, confetti stitches, as they say, or you could sew on a button. So it's worth, you know, saving these little pieces and they don't get uh, messed up in your project bag because they're separated and they're kept with the bobbin with the rest of the color. So you can mark these in different ways. I mean, I suppose you could tape something over it, but you don't want these to look um, messy. So the two main ways, I guess, that you could mark these would be with the post-it labeling tape. And it's really skinny, so you can just um, tear off a little piece, write the number on it, and put it on the bobbin, and it's removable. What's really funny is, I went to our local Staples and the poor clerk had to go like six different places within the store to find it. And he finally found it where they keep their um, folders and um, dividers and that sort of thing for like a file cabinet. Of course, it wasn't with post-it notes. It wasn't with tape. Um, so he had to look it up in the catalog and ask a few people in the back and try to figure out where to find it. Well, guess what? I already had it. I already had some. Um, I use this, because it's really skinny, I use this to fix any mistakes in my check register. So I didn't even think about the fact that it was removable because I wasn't ever planning on removing it from the paper, but it's easy to remove from the plastic. The other thing you could do is use a fine point magic marker, which my friend Bonnie Mounts has tried and you can wipe off the number with like an alcohol wipe, um, maybe even uh, a makeup remover um, sheet. Maybe you could cut some up into smaller pieces and keep them in a little package and keep them handy, uh, but that works. So those are two good ways that you have of labeling them. Now, if you're working out of a kit and you only have certain colors, you can certainly refer to the color code on the chart and that's how you can keep them straight so you don't really need to mark up the bobbin. So anyway, this is what I'm giving away this time. So maybe tell me how you store your floss. I just store mine on a ring. I use a big ring like this for every company. So I have one for weeks, one for general art, one for classic, um, one for silk, one for other specialty fibers. Sometimes I need two 
because they uh, some of the companies have like 400 colors so you might need more than one but I use the big three inch ring uh, and I don't I don't wind my floss because I don't have time for that. So anyway, just um, tell me how you store your floss and I'll put you in the drawing for the floss biddies. Um, it's a $10 uh, value and I won't see you again until after Thanksgiving. So have a great holiday, no matter how small or different it is. We certainly always have something to be grateful for and we'll eat well, that's for sure. Okay, bye-bye.